ජීවිතේ වැඩිපුර ලැබෙන හොඳම දේවල් දෙන්න දැන් SLT Broadband වෙති 75% දක්වා වැඩිපුර ඩේටා සතුට ජනවාරි 15 වෙනිදා සිට ශ්‍රී ලංකා ටෙලිකොම් Tonight on Other Therana coalition repelled UPF staunchly opposes moving ahead with Ranil Wickremesinghe as prime minister Determined to stand alone United National Party backbenchers hopeful of a single party government Stringing together the president in a crucial discussion with the UNP parliamentary group Permutations politicians express views on how to move ahead in the current political situation Annexation Israeli PM admits to discussions with the US on implementing Israeli laws in Jewish settlements In sports for the setback Kusal Jani Pereira to miss the T20s with Bangladesh Good evening and a warm welcome to First at Nine. The local authorities election which saw considerable losses for the United National Party and the Sri Lanka Freedom Party uh, has now created unseen problems for both major political parties in the country. The United National Party is especially under pressure as we, many important discussions uh, were taking place uh, throughout the last few days. Now a special discussion between President Maithripala Sirisena and Prime Minister and uh, the ministers representing the United National Party is currently underway at the president's house our reporter at the location says that prime minister ranil wickremesinghe is also present at the meeting back benches of the united national party came to a decision this afternoon that the unp should sever ties with the slfp to form a single party unp government our reporter says that these current discussions between the president and the members of the united national party are being held on the matter we will bring you more details on this story as and when they are revealed as and when it is reported to us stay tuned to first at 9 and now we take a look at how these events and discussions unfolded following the local authorities election sri lanka poljana peramuna which was backed by former president mahindra rajapaksha clinched 70% of local bodies with victories in 231 local authorities out of 340 it left the two main parties in the government the united national party and the sri lanka freedom party with a combined total of 43 local authorities in this backdrop slfp parliamentarians representing the government held discussions with the president on the morning of the 11th of february the day after the elections parliamentarians party to the discussions later revealed that the president is attempting to make a sizable change within the government later in the afternoon The president and the prime minister held talks while media reports stated that the president had requested the premier to step down from the position. Reports went on to say that the prime minister had not come to a final agreement during the meeting. The premier's meeting with the head of state was followed by another yesterday with prominent ministers of the UNP such as ministers Sajid Premadasa and Navin Desanayake. After the talks at Temple Trees, the ministers revealed that there won't be any change to the UNP leadership or to the position of the prime minister. A group of deputy ministers representing UNP however met with the prime minister at Temple Trees last night. Following the meeting deputy minister Dr Harsha De Silva said that they held direct talks with prime minister Ranil Wickremesinghe on criticisms surrounding the party leadership and the failure of the national government in the local authorities election. It was my opinion that this is the public opinion against the government. I also told the prime minister that there is criticism leveled against the party's leadership. We need to come to terms with this reality in order to move forward as a party. We won't be able to find solutions to these problems if we don't talk about them openly. I asked him not to take it personally, but that we have to talk about it. Now we take you to talks yesterday during the meeting between Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe deputy ministers of the United National Party has also requested the premier to come to a conclusion 
on the future course of the government after talks with the president. It was in this backdrop that the Prime Minister Rana Wickremesinghe arrived at the official residence of the president at 8.30 last night. Political sources said that the chairman of the UNP, Minister Malik, Sa Malik Samar Wickremesinghe, General Secretary of the UPFA, Minister Mahinda Amaravira, as well as Deputy Speaker Tilanga Sumatipala, were also party to the discussion. Meanwhile, responding to inquiries made by other Dharana, Minister Malik Samaravikrama said that the party decided to continue the unity government for the next two years. The chairman of the UNP, Minister Malik Samaravikrama, stated to other Dharana that any party wishing to join hands with the two major parties could do so if they wish to. Furthermore, he said that they view this as an opportunity to address all the shortcomings of the current government. Speaking on the discussion held between UNP parliamentarians last night, Minister Samar Vikrama revealed that the party's parliamentarians stressed the lack of need to change the UNP leadership. Minister Samar Vikrama also emphasized that SLFP parliamentarians who didn't even cast their votes to appoint the president has no ethical right to talk about changes to the United National Party's leadership. Earlier in the day, UNP backbenchers emphasized that they will establish a single party government for the next two years as severe ties with the Sri Lanka Freedom Party as they decide to sever ties with the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. UNP parliamentarians expressed their views following a meeting with Prime Minister Rana Wickremesinghe on internal issues of the party and the government's future plans. There should first be changes in the government. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksha says that he isn't ready to accept this government. He says he doesn't want an unstable country. So we as the UNP are ready to stabilize this country. It's because of this good governance nonsense that we couldn't make the country move forward. Voters cast their votes against us. There was a delay when making important decisions for the country because of this unity. That delay won't happen again. <laughs> They can't make decisions about our party. The UNP lost in this election, but the SLFP suffered a worse loss than us. So they can't make decisions for the UNP. Various politicians express their views on the current political situation. The general election in 2015 concluded giving 106 parliamentary seats to the United National Party, while the United People's Freedom Alliance secured only 95 seats. Out of that 95, 52 parliamentarians represent the joint opposition in parliament, while 43 MPs represent the National Unity Government. Tamil National Alliance secured 16 seats, while the People's Liberation Front secured only 6 seats. Sri Lanka Muslim Congress, as well as the EPDP, could only claim one seat each. If the UNP is to form its own government, they require the support of another six parliamentarians. Meanwhile, a spokesperson from the United People's Freedom Alliance told other Dharana that the UPFA will oppose any government led by Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe. The Tamil National Alliance has not been approached with regard to uh, extending support uh, to form a new government uh, by any party. Um, even if uh, we uh, are opposed, our consistent position has been that we will not uh, uh, support uh, or join uh, any government uh, until the uh, national question is resolved. Uh, therefore, this uh, issue does not arise now. Uh, nevertheless, uh, if there is a new government, either by the UNB or the SLFP or anybody else, uh, we will uh, remain in the opposition. But uh, we will extend critical support, uh, particularly in respect of matters uh, that affect our people uh, and uh, for steps that are taken uh, for a permanent solution. We will also support uh, other progressive steps that are taken by that government. Uh, but we will uh, remain in the opposition and extend our support for any uh, government that is uh, progressive in nature.
අපි කිසිසේත්ම පාර්ලිමේන්තුව තුලදී we will never support the government in parliament as the public did not give us a mandate at the last general election until they give us power to form a government we will be doing our duty of the opposition if required the unp can seek the support of the slfp the joint opposition or the tna irrespective of who joins them the jvp will not support such a process janata aimukti perun kisset ekata daayaka wenne nahe Former President Mahindra Rajapaksa says that the current government should do away with revengeful politics and respect the mandate of the people. The former president was speaking on the aftermath of the local authorities election at the Bellangwila Temple last evening. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksa arrived at the Bellangwila Temple to attend a Bodhi Puja conducted under the guidance of Chief Incumbent Venerable Bellangwila Dhammaratan Athera. Following the event, the former president also spoke to media. We have won local authorities elections. The results clearly show where the people stand. I think people have voted against the government jointly run by the UNP and SLFP. People were burdened with cost of living, selling the state properties etc. As the president said, this government had looted public property from the first month they came into power. The public has now given an indication to them and they must understand the message given by the public. They must stop their plans of revenge and they must also stop making comments such as annulling civic rights etc. Instead, they should be ready to serve the public. Otherwise, they should go for a general election. <laughs> ඉතින් බොහොම කෙටි කාලයක් ඇක පොයයි ඊළඟ පොය වෙනකොට ලෑස්ති වෙන්න ඕන මිසක් පොයක් අපි කරන ලද සේවය we built a country we ended the decades long war without it people can't come to a temple and engage in religious observances like this both the tamil and muslim communities can roam freely today they can go to the polling station to vote against us because we defeated the ltte we brought development to the country venerable bellanula thera was planning to shoulder a new struggle over the national issue There are other areas to be addressed rather than running a government with just 113 MPs in the parliament. Ekasi da tuna hada gena andu karana hai gena nevi tiyenne. Vartaman janadipottuma eksak jatika ata herala. Etumate eksak jatika paksha atar inna baha. E tatwe athi vela tiyena mata ra peyenu ekiyata. Etuma tungi sthane ekata wenna. Oh idin. Not really. He has dropped to fourth in some areas. Only 62 votes were cast for him at one of the polling stations in Atnagal. Kandidana giya dana. The joint opposition expressed their concerns over the United National Party's ambitions to form a single party government. Addressing a media briefing of the joint opposition today, the UPFA MP Bandur Gunawardena also touched on a five-fold system adopted by the UNP when they came to power. Pasugiya varsha tunaka kala parichchedi. The management of the country's economy was undertaken by the UNP during the last 3 years. We noted that they were trying to manage the economy in accordance with a five-fold system. That five-fold system includes revenge, taxation, uttering lies, selling, and corruption. The final result of that process was the people refusing them and voting for the flower bud. If they are to go alone, even we can't fathom what kind of damage they will do. They would even change the cultural meanings. When I'm going to get me, when I say it, through the time when I'm with you, I'll be caught up. Dita got the bag. Then, despite a change in jockey, a horse does not change its course. You can't find a solution to this problem without changing both the jockey and the horse. Me prashne to uttar ya khoyan be. You are watching Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verana 24/7. Welcome back as uncertainty is hovering over the political situation of the country following the local authorities election with the UNP and the SLFP in particular attempting to figure out their best footing these are some of the views expressed on the political arena on the subject Then me Mathiwarana after winning this election we see that all thieves are surrounding Mahinda Rajapaksha if these political beggars get involved in this new path we will face a major catastrophe in the future What we are suggesting is that Maithripal Sirisena step down and hand mind the Rajapaksha the leadership of the party. Akshay Baradinna. Mega Rajya Kavasan anyway. This is not the end of the government. You can't get rid of a government this way. These votes were not cast to make Maithripal step down. As he predicted, they got over 50% of the vote. The party that won only has 45%. Who becomes prime minister is a decision only Ranil Wickremesinghe can make 
and we request the Prime Minister to hand over the position to someone capable. We want a new Prime Minister. We are hoping that President Matripal Sirisena will make that decision in the next few days. This government has fallen like a patient on life support at the ICU. The government is running purely on the back of the 19th Amendment. Now they are having discussions about a UNP government or getting together with the Tamil National Alliance to form a government or even to appoint Karujai Surya as a Prime Minister and bring back the process of the national government and to move into the future. We will never agree to these so-called changes in the government and nor do the people. Malik Samarvikrama has stated that they will move ahead with a public mandate. How do you go on with a government without a mandate? The flowerbud stated that this local authority's election should be transformed into a referendum against his government. In a referendum, at least 50.1% of votes are required for victory. But the flowerbud has only obtained 46.5% of votes. Although they say that they won, according to these numbers, they have lost. They cannot move ahead without getting together with the SLFP. The public voted for a newly formed party and therefore there is no need for any other party to join together with us. Our values and principles are different. No one has spoken about it with me. It's better to just stay at home and sleep than take up the post of Prime Minister in this manner. The public should decide who they want as their Prime Minister. So rather than wait for two more years, we should hold both the general election and the presidential election as soon as possible. Then the public can make a decision as to what they want to do. And now we move on to take a look at other stories making news across Sri Lanka in brief. Hindus around the world celebrate Mahashivaratri today and devotees will engage in a fast and engage in religious observances in honour of Lord Shiva. President Maithripal Sirisena says that the Mahashivaratri day observed by Hindu devotees across the world today will eliminate the dark evil thoughts which emerge in the hearts of humans and illuminate wisdom and thoughtfulness. Airport customs revealed that two women aged 40 and 31 from Mirigama and Varakapula respectively were taken into custody for illegally bringing in 41,040 cigarettes to the country. Airport customs stated that the two women arrived in the country early this morning from Dubai. Several farmers from Anuradhapura and Kurunagala districts have voiced their displeasure over the fact that there is less demand in the market for sweet corn. These farmers turn to sweet corn this season instead of paddy as dry weather has hindered paddy farming. The farmers say that they are gravely inconvenienced due to a price of a kilo of sweet corn dropping from 35 rupees to 30 rupees. A house in the area of Han Valley in Kalu Aggala caught fire during the early hours of today. The owner of the property, a doctor, contested in the local authorities' election, but he says that the fire is no way related to political factors. And in business news, Sri Lanka recently participated in the International Mediterranean Tourism Market, the IMTM 2018 in Tel Aviv, Israel. The Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau, in collaboration with the Embassy of Sri Lanka in Tel Aviv, organized and coordinated the participation of Sri Lanka in the 24th International Mediterranean Tourism Market. The IMTM is the largest annual professional official exhibition for the tourism market in Israel, which promotes and focuses on both domestic and foreign tourism, as well as strengthening cooperation among tourism bodies in Israel and elsewhere in the world. Sri Lanka has been participating in the market regularly. The main objective of the participation of Sri Lanka was to create awareness and portray the beauty of the Paradise Island amongst Israeli tourists. According to the IMTM organizers, 50 countries participated in the exhibition and approximately 25,500 visitors participated in the exhibition center. In news overseas, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu revealed yesterday that he discussed with the United States the possible Israeli annexation of Jewish settlements in the occupied West Bank. Netanyahu was uh, referring to applying Israeli law to the settlements, a step tantamount to annexation. They are currently under the jurisdiction of the Israeli military that occupied the West Bank in a 1967 war. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said that he has discussed with the United States the possibility of implementing Israeli laws in Jewish settlements, 
a step tantamount to annexation. But the statement stoked Palestinian anger already high over U.S. President Donald Trump's announcement on December 6th that the United States recognizes Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Meanwhile, Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas told Russian President Vladimir Putin yesterday he could no longer accept the role of the United States as a mediator in talks with Israel because of Washington's behavior. In such an atmosphere which was created by the U.S. actions, we state that from now on we refuse to cooperate in any form with the U.S. in its status as a mediator as we stand against its actions. Abbas was quoted as saying he wanted an expanded new mediation mechanism to replace the Middle East Quartet. Also in news overseas, North Korea's leader has called to further liven up a warm climate of reconciliation with the South created by the Winter Olympics. Kim Jong-un, whose nuclear bomb and missile tests have stoked international tension, praised the South for hosting his state at the Games in Pyeongchang. Kim's apparent Games charm offensive was led by his sister Kim yo Yong. South Korean President Moon Jae-in has meanwhile said the U.S. is open to talking with the North. Although he did not elaborate, he may have been referring to a, a remark by the U.S. Vice President Mike Pence on his flight back to Washington from the Games. And we take a look at other emerging stories from across the world. Emergency services in Tonga are working to reopen roads today and assess what assistance they may need after Cyclone Gita tore across the Pacific Island nation in the middle of the night. Graham Kenner, an Australian government advisor at Tonga's National Emergency Management Office, said that there were no confirmed reports of deaths from the Category 4 storm, but there were a lot of injured people. South Africa's African National Congress Party leader Cyril Ramaphosa and members of the National Executive Committee left a hotel early today after a 13-hour meeting on the fate of President Jacob Zuma. A senior ANC source was quoted as saying that the Executive Committee has decided to remove Zuma as head of state. The British Royal Navy worked with London's Metropolitan Police yesterday to remove a 500-kilogram World War II ordnance found in the River Thames at George V Dock. Police said the bomb was found during work at the airport day before yesterday and they set up a 200-meter exclusion zone. For the nearly 3,000 dogs converging on New York City yesterday for the annual Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show, good dog is a dreaded assessment, but best dog is a dream come true. Now in its 142nd year, it's the second oldest US sporting event and some view it as the canine version of the Olympic Games, which coincidentally are taking place simultaneously in South Korea. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says that the Olympic ban on Russian athletes was based on unfair competition because in a fair fight, the Americans can no longer beat them. The International Olympic Committee banned Russia from the Games after a doping scandal and all but one of the 169 athletes that were cleared to compete are taking part in Pyeongchang as neutral Olympic athletes from Russia. Thousands of Myanmar people gathered at a stadium in central Magwe region in Myanmar yesterday in an attempt to set a Guinness World Record for the largest number of people forming the shape of Myanmar. Organizers said that over 3,400 people joined the event and sang the national anthem as a sign to show unity and strength. Guinness World Records has yet to confirm the actual number of participants and has yet to announce the result of the attempt. You are watching Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Avadharana 24-7. Welcome back in sports. We start off with cricket. Sri Lanka's white ball captain Angelo Matthews believes that a new rehabilitation process on the lower half of his body will help him to stay injury free in 2018. Meanwhile, batsman Kusal Janit Pereira, who was named in the 15 member squad to take part in the upcoming T20 games against Bangladesh, has been ruled out of the two games of the shortest format following medical advice. There was new hope when Angelo Matthews accepted the team's white ball captaincy ahead of the tour of Bangladesh, having stepped down from the role six months ago. However, after just one game in Bangladesh, he was forced to return home as the old hamstring injury resurfaced. 
He was expected to travel to Bangladesh to take over the captaincy duties ahead of the T20s, having finished his rehabilitation work. But following medical advice, he will make his return during the Nidahas Trophy, the Tri-Nation tournament that will be played to celebrate Sri Lanka's 70th year of independence. Meanwhile, according to medical advice, Kusal Pereira needs more time to recover from the side strain which he suffered during the second match Sri Lanka played against Zimbabwe in the concluded ODI Tri-Series in Bangladesh, in which the Sri Lankans became the champions. Kusal Janit Pereira did not leave with the T20 players who left the country yesterday. Kusal Mendes will replace Kusal Janit Pereira. On to the Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, Canada's Mikhail Kingsbury demolished the field to win Olympic gold in the men's moguls at Phoenix Snow Park yesterday, four years after finishing as runner-up in Sochi. Matt Graham of Australia clinched the silver and Japan's Daichihara took bronze. 25-year-old Mikhail Kingsbury is the all-time leader in mogul skiing victories and his streak of 13 consecutive World Cup wins is the longest ever. But the Olympic gold was the medal he has craved since losing out to compatriot Alex Billadieu in 2014. Kingsbury has dominated mogul skiing since the last Olympics and lived up to his billing with a flawless final run to score 86.63 points and earn Canada the men's mogul title for the third games in a row. Meanwhile, Dutch speed skater Irene Wast secured her place in history by claiming a record 10th Olympic speed skating medal when she surged to gold in the women's 1,500 metres at the Gangneung Oval yesterday. Wast, who is the first Dutch athlete to win five Olympic gold medals and the most decorated Dutch Olympian with 10 medals in total, crossed the line in 1 minute 54.35 seconds with Japan's Miho Takagi taking the silver. And on to football, Russian President Vladimir Putin met FIFA President Gianni Infantino in the Kremlin yesterday to discuss preparations for the FIFA World Cup due to take place in Russia in June. Moscow has eased visa regulations for foreign soccer fans and pumped billions of dollars into stadiums, hotels and other infrastructure as the Kremlin is keen to improve Russia's image in its worst crisis with the West since the Cold War. Russia has come under several rounds of Western sanctions over the annexation of Crimea and Moscow's role in Europe, Ukraine's conflict with pro-Russian separatists. You are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel, Other Verna 24-7. And we take a look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours. A very good evening and welcome to Forecast First. Now, temperatures may vary between 19 to 31 degrees Celsius over the next 24 hours with light showers forecast in the northern, north central, eastern and over promises. Misty conditions can also be expected at some places in the western, Sabaragamur, southern and central provinces during the morning hours. Well, that's it from your weather centre tonight. Up next is your city by city forecast. Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verena 24-7. And that's all from the News Centre for tonight. But before we go, as usual, we'd like to take you to one of Sri Lanka's most prestigious national monuments, the Independence Memorial Hall in the heart of Colombo. The hall, based on the architecture of the Magul Madhu in Kandy, was built to commemorate the independence of Sri Lanka from British rule. The statue of the first Prime Minister of Sri Lanka, the late Dia Sinanayaka, is located at the head of the building. Have a pleasant evening. Good night. Bringing you the news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Other Verana 24 7.